subscribe. Hi everybody and welcome back. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today I'm going to talk about the direction of the bow. So it's been asked by one of my subscribers about when to do an up bow and when to do a down bow. So I'm just going to go through what all of that means so you know um, what it actually is I'm talking about on the violin, which way the bow is going and what that relates to on the music. So if I show you what's an up bow and what's a down bow first on the violin so we can clear that up and then we'll go on to having a look at what it means on the music. So very simply, an up bow is when you're starting at the point of the bow. This is the point of the bow, and where your hand is is what we call the heel of the bow. So if you're doing an up bow, it's really easy to remember because you're moving the bow up, so the bow is, is, is almost going to be hitting the ceiling. Obviously we won't hit the ceiling, but it's called an up bow because we're going upwards towards the ceiling, and we're calling it a down bow because we're starting at the heel of the bow, or where the hand is and we're moving the hand down towards the floor. So up and down. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're doing an up bow, it's just going up. If you're doing a down bow, it's just going down. This, this little square block here is indicates a down bow. These arrows here indicate up bows. So you just have to remember that this is a down bow and these two here are up bows. So it gives you a good general indication of when to do an up bow, when to do a down bow. Now if you're actually, if you're told in the music when to do a down bow, when to do an up bow, then your job is done. It's really easy for you because you just, when it says, when you've got the little, the little square block, I suppose, or like an N, it's almost like a, like a small letter N, if you like, but with straight edges. If you see one of those, then you've got to do a down bow. If you see the arrow, um, or, or the V, if you like, um, then it means that you've got to do an up bow. So, for example, this uh, this is Ragtime from my violin book that uh, I, I wrote with Simon Erson. This is Ragtime, one of the pieces from that. So I've actually put some bowing marks in there so you know exactly what to do. If I didn't, you'd, you'd probably, the, the way I've written the music, it's a very, um, it's very syncopated rhythm. So it's very kind of off and on the beat. Syncopation is, is off and on the beat. Um, so if I didn't do that, you'd probably get the bowing would feel like it, it's going the wrong way. Having said that, or, or moving on to that point, if you feel, sometimes you can feel, if you're doing an up bow, uh, if you start with an up bow and you're pass you've, you've started your passage, for example, with an up bow, and you're doing all the bowing as it comes after that, you can sort of feel that your, your, your fingers and your bow uh, are moving against the rhythm of, of the music. So just go back and try it with a down bow and you'll probably find it works a lot better. If you're doing a lot of faster passages, if you start on an up bow, sometimes that can be great. If you start on a down bow, it can feel like you're going against the grain a little bit. So just experiment. There's no necess there isn't necessarily a right or a wrong way of bowing, but depending on which way you bow will change almost the sound um, and the style of the music. So this is what your up bow and down bow looks like. If you see them there, you should follow what the music says because it's written in there. For example, I've written this in here to show you basically that if, if you don't do that type of bowing, A, you won't get the style that I want you to, to, to achieve out of this, and B, you'll find, you'll find it more difficult to do the opposite bowing to what I've written here. Generally speaking, um, I wonder if I can find something in here. So, okay, Country Stroll, which is another piece, which is uh, probably one of, the, one of the nicer pieces. Well, they're all nice anyway, but one of my favorites, I should say, in here. Now, I started Country Stroll with, with an up arrow. By the way, if you want to know where to buy this book, I'll put a link in the description bar underneath. Anybody can buy it anywhere around the world. So even if you're in Australia or if you're in America, Canada, Mexico, wherever you are, you can buy it because it's 100% downloadable. So the link will be in the description box underneath that you can click on to, pay by PayPal, download it, completely safe and all that kind of thing. Then you can start playing Country Stroll and it comes with backing tracks as well by the way. So that's enough of my shameless plug of my book. So for example this one here starts with an up bow. So what you might notice about this piece of music here is that it looks like it's got a bit of an upbeat. It's what we call an anacrusis. So it means that it doesn't start on the first beat of the bar. This is the first real bar and this is like a little pickup note or like a little upbeat to the music. So generally speaking, if you have an upbeat or a pickup note or an anacrusis, whatever you want to call it, I would generally start on an up bow. If your piece of music just starts on the first beat of the bar, like for example, this Spanish piece here, it just starts 
on the first beat of the bar, if you can see that closely enough there, it just starts on, on beat one, then I would generally start that on a down bow. So if you've got an up beat, you need to start on an up bow, otherwise you're starting on a down and then you're starting your main beat or the main tune on an up bow. And that's when you will feel it doesn't sound, it doesn't feel right because your body will be moving against the, the pulse or the beat of the music. If it's, if there's nothing there, if it just starts one, two, three, four, boom, and off you go, then I would start with a down bow. That's my general rule of thumb with that one. And I, I pretty much, I don't think there, pretty, there are any exceptions to the rule with that one. That pretty much is it. Anacrusis, pick up note, upbeat. I always start with an up bow. If it starts on the main beat of the bar, I will always start, yeah, I'll always pretty much start with a down bow on that one. Um, also then you've got slurs as well and let me have a look see if I can find some of them so for example this piece here passing memories so it says here that you start with a down bow the next one will be an up bow now these two notes here because they've got a slur by this little line here they would both be in a down bow the next note would be up down up down up and these two here would be down so down down up down up down and so on so that's if you've got slurs so whatever bow if, if you come to the first note in a in a slur of two or three or four notes or whatever it is that you've got to do then whatever bow that you come to for that all the rest of them will be in that same bow so it's almost like doing for um for this one here that i showed you where you did a down bow then an up bow then these two notes here are going to be in a down bow. I don't mean like a down, down. You don't want to break that. You just do the two notes in one downward motion. So it's a little bit difficult to explain with slurs and they are, slurring the bow is very, very difficult as, as a beginner. I'm not going to lie to you there. It is, it is hard to do, but if you can do your scales and things uh, slurred or you can just get the hang of doing them slurred notes, it would be, it would be more beneficial to you because you'll get a nicer sound. If I play that to you, So this is the first part, or the first two bars of Passing Memories, just separate bows. That was all separate bows there. If I put the slur in, so I get a slightly different tone there because I've slurred them. So when I'm slurring them, these two notes are gonna be in a down. And then I carry on rather than I don't really want to do that so then you're talking about spatial awareness with the bow you need to make sure that you don't run out of too much bow and again that's a practice thing um, and that's something that you will get better at as well so what you don't want to do is use too much bow up on the first one and then you've got nothing left for the next one so you almost have to it's it's so difficult for me to explain how to do that because it's something that um, I don't really know how I did. I didn't really get taught how to do that as such. Nobody said, right, you have to use 20% of the bow to go down and then 35%. It doesn't really quite work like that. It's almost like judging when to cross a busy road and when not to. If you, if you, you know when to sort of cross a road because you can see where the cars are coming, you can see how fast they're coming, you know how fast it takes you to make your legs go from one side of the road to the other, you judge the traffic, you have a look, and if you find a gap that you think, yep, yeah, that's big enough for me to get through, then, then, then you do it. But how do you know that? Uh, you can't really explain it, it's just spatial awareness. So just be aware of what's coming up, but that's what practice is for, so that you can trial and error this, so you don't run out of too much bow. I guess as a general rule of thumb, um, because I've got two notes in one bow, I'll, I'll use half the bow for the first note, and I'll use the second half of the bow for the second note. So, roughly, anyway. If I was doing four notes, I guess if you want to put it mathematically, I might just sort of roughly split the bow into four portions there. So 25, I might split the bow into sort of 25% portions. So I've got, if I've got four notes that are all the same value, da, 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 for example, I know I've got to get the first note, da, 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 roughly. So that gives me an idea of, of how much to, how fast to pull the bow down. But again, that's, that's just practice. 
So I hope this has helped with the direction of the bow. This is, wasn't meant to be a, a particularly technical video it, as such. It was just to explain, it was just to explain to you um, off the back of one of my subscribers' questions about when, when, when to follow the direction of a bow, what's an up bow, what's a down bow, when to do an up bow and when to do a down bow. But again, just remember the general rule of thumb. If, it, if, the, if the music starts on the first beat of the bar, so there's no upbeat or pick up note or anacrusis or anything like that, I would generally, as a rule of thumb, start on a down bow. If there is a pick up note, you're going to be starting on an up bow. If you've got more than one note for the pick up note or the anacrusis, whatever you want to call it, then you have to organize the bowing so that when you do start the, the proper main bar, that starts on a down bow. So if you've got uh, two notes at the start, for example, you might want to start down, up, so that you can start your main bar with a down and so on and so forth. So I hope that's helped you all. Um, please subscribe, please like the video um, and everything if you want to see more videos and things. Um, and I shall see you in the next one. Subscribe.